I'm Jennifer Sanasi. You're watching News 24 Live. Anthony and Brad from Tubop are joining me in studio, and we're going to be chatting everything about the streetwear fashion industry. Hello. Hey. Hello. You guys look very chilled and relaxed. Always. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me about Tubop. How did it start? It um, started as an idea. I mean, I always wanted to start a streetwear brand. Like, I was a skater growing up. always wanted to start a skate brand. And then eventually wanted to start a streetwear brand and then just had the idea of um, coming up with Tubop, which is a local slang for a 20 cent piece, mm -hmm. which is what you used to play the old arcade games back in the day, which was a huge inspiration in my misspent youth. So it was just a concept that was yeah, enough to keep me inspired for the rest of my life. So yeah, that's how it started. Cool. How did you get involved? I've known Anthony for a long time. <laughs> Um, and I, come f I have a design background and he started chatting to me about doing some work for him initially mm -hmm. um, and he spoke to me about the concept and there was, I mean he's from PE and I'm from Cape Town and I spent a lot of time sort of at corner stores playing some games but it was just like a misspent youth mm -hmm. and there was just like so much synergy and started off, what started off as one design just kind of kept going and the next thing I knew we had our first office, just yeah. kind of happened. That's great. Yeah. Now, Anthony, you said you started out off as a skater and you wanted your own skate brand. And I think almost every kid who starts off as a skater wants their own skate brand. Yeah. Uh, but when they try, they get overtaken by, by the big players in the game. How did you guys get through that? Well, I think like growing up in the 90s, like the skate industry in the US was kind of run by skater-owned companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it kind of had that like philosophy of like, do it yourself, you know, like you can yeah. do it, you can grow something organically that can be sustainable. So I kind of always had that in the back of my mind that you can do it, you know, it's been done before and I kind of had a blueprint of how I saw it happening and yeah, it started like that. And it's just simple if you don't want to get beat up by the bullies, don't hang out with them. So we just kind of stayed, stayed away from things that we couldn't control, you know, so, I mean, basic challenges like, for example, dealing with a chain store, you mm -hmm. know, they want certain units, and we knew that the way we wanted to do it locally was not going to sort of work that way, so we just never spoke to them at all. We just only dealt with independence and just let everything sort of grow organically. Mm -hmm. you know, we, never, we never did anything we didn't feel comfortable with. Will you ever deal with chain stores? Uh, we, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just started... Um, putting some of our headwear into sports scene, mm -hmm. but like on a very limited basis. So we kind of still want to have that sort of exclusivity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, we're still building a relationship with them. And I think it's, it's about storytelling and telling our brand's story and just being authentic in that way. So I think if you find the right partner who mm -hmm. understands your brand and can tell that story in the correct way, I mean, I think there is place for a streetwear or independent streetwear brand to engage with with chain stores. 